what El Nino phenomenon is? El Nino is a complex climate phenomenon that has worldwide implications. It consists of an abnormal warming of the waters of the Pacific Ocean next to the coasts of South America. This warming changes the direction of the winds, causing flooding in some locations on the planet and in others extreme droughts. But El Nino has a significant other, La Nina, which makes reference to the opposite phenomenon, a cooling of the waters in the Pacific Ocean that causes the opposite effect. The presence of El Nino creates favorable conditions for drought in some regions, like Central America, Colombia, Venezuela, Vietnam, the Philippines, Southern Africa, and Australia, while in other regions it causes floods like Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, Uruguay, Mexico, and East Africa. Did you know that there are two types of El Nino? Some recent investigations have shown the existence of two types of warming of the Pacific Ocean waters. The first is known as El Nino Canonico, which is the classical version of the phenomenon, and the second is known as El Nino Modoki. Modoki is a Japanese word that means similar but different. The difference in this case is that the oceanic warming occurs towards the west more than expected, in other words, closer to the middle. This is important because the impact on weather and agriculture are different. For Central America and the Caribbean, these two types of El Niño influence the number of hurricanes. El Niño Canonico produces less hurricanes on the Atlantic and more on the Pacific, while El Niño Modoki produces more hurricanes in the Atlantic. And what are the impacts of this phenomenon in agriculture? How is it affecting us? FAO has followed El Niño very closely and has made important discoveries. You would be shocked. We'll tell you what we've learned so far. First of all, we know that for El Niño to affect food production, it must reduce rainfall during the sensitive phases of the crop cycle, the most important being the flowering and filling of the grain. However, it's not as simple as it sounds because several dynamic events must happen at the same time. The oceanic waters must be warmed. The atmosphere has to be affected by this warming and also there are a lot more local variables that mitigate or exacerbate the impact of El Niño. This is very similar to solving a Rubik's Cube, where moving one side modifies the other faces. For this reason, it is difficult to predict the impacts that each event will have because each one has its own characteristics of intensity, beginning, and duration. We have learned that the sole presence of El Niño is a threat to agriculture, regardless of its intensity. Phenomena classified as weak in the past have caused considerable losses in the agricultural sector and vice versa. Another important finding is the variation in the global production of cereals, which can be explained by cycles. This makes it even more difficult to understand the impacts that an isolated El Niño event can have on agriculture. Let's see how FAO explains this. There are consecutive years where there are more El Niño events than La Niña and vice versa. FAO has named these periods the dominance of El Niño or La Niña. During the dominance of El Niño, there is more agricultural area affected by drought, therefore greater loss in agricultural production. One of the most common questions is if climate change has any influence on the El Niño phenomenon. Climate change has influenced the rise in the temperature of ocean waters, which causes even warmer El Niño events. Recent events outperform past events in intensity. More and more energy is accumulated in ocean waters, increasing the intensity of hurricanes. Another interesting fact is that there is a distance in between the extreme events of El Niño, which goes from every seven years in the beginning of the 50s to every 17 years in 2019. Events classified as extremely strong move away in time. However, moderate events are similar in intensity to those classified as strong in the past due precisely to climate change. What does FAO propose to mitigate the effects of El Niño? Strengthen the agroclimatic information systems for timely decision making. A technique for an efficient management of water resources. Development of national plans for facing and managing natural disasters. Forest fires monitoring. Monitoring and management of pests and diseases.
In conclusion, a question you're all probably wondering, can you stop or minimize the effects of the El Niño phenomenon? Unfortunately, it cannot be stopped. It will continue to have effects on our climate and therefore agriculture, but we can prepare for it and mitigate its negative effects. The challenge of having a world without hunger means having a preventive approach to climate threats, to prepare and learn to mitigate its impacts with knowledge, innovation, and good practices to adapt to the climate of the future.